so what do you know about the spirit world or what have you been told about the spirit you haven't been to the spirit world to know about it so except in your sleep state right and, and for most of us that means we're in fairly confined space in our sleep state so so what have you been told about spirit world that you sort of understand at this point what 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 have you been told so so if we if we look at it from the point of view of the spheres what do you know about the spheres in terms of love so if we use microphones, so, so we come around here, start, start at Gabriella. <laughs> She's got lots of exercise happening today. Uh, intergalactic boundaries of love, I think you So said. they're boundaries of love. Yes. So You're that okay. means the more love we have, the more what? Free, room we have to grow. More room we have. We, 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 we can go, if we have enough love to enter the third sphere, then we can then we can traverse anywhere from the first up from to the, our limit. So even the earth, you can go back anybody down can traverse the earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, we can, so here's the earth generally in the first sphere. So we can traverse the first, second, third sphere as well, right up to the third if we have that amount of love. Is that not second and first? That's, that's, that's my understanding. That's your yes. understanding, right? Yes. Okay. So, so love is the primary requirement, basically, for the traversing of the spheres and giving you more freedom. Is that not the case? Okay. Now, if a person is in a poor condition and he can only be in the first sphere, and when I say poor condition, I'm referring specifically to God's definition of what the loving condition is, not his own. And he's in the first sphere, where can he go? He can go to the first sphere or he can surround the earth, can't he? He can't go to the second sphere. Okay? Is that not true? Okay. Free Floyd, if you want to ask a question about that. Sorry. That, no? You've got the rover right next to you. <laughs> We're talking after death, or are we talking now in our life state? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, so if you are in the third sphere and you go to sleep at night, your spirit body can go anywhere from the third sphere, second sphere, first sphere, or around the earth. Yep. But if you're in the first sphere and you go to sleep at night, you will only ever be able to go around the direction of where the first sphere is, basically. That's the principle. Yep. Because it's the condition of love that determines where we go. Okay. Okay. So, how does that relate to the formulation of a group? Well, there's very big principles in that relating to the formulation of any group. Right? And what I'm going to do, and Mary's going to do, is we're going to go through how that relates to the formulation of a group. Does that make sense? Number two is that Cornelius, in his presentation, said a lot of things to you very rapidly. Right? And many of you have no idea yet how important many of the things Corny shared with you actually are. In fact, sometimes he made two statements in one sentence and you could have spent a good, you know, three months discussing one half of that one statement. So, so what we'd like to do is get from Corny his, his original five considerations, if you like, and also ask you how that relates to the formulation of any group. But let's look firstly at this issue of love. If you make a Facebook group of your own, just a Facebook group, or you make any form, whether it's in a physical or typing or audio sense, what's going to be the governing condition of that group? If we go to side. The condition of the person that formed it, I would assume there has to be a connection there somewhere. Good, so that's one. The condition of the person forming the group. Condition possibility change as people join if, if somebody else, if sort of leadership move to that new person would that change the condition or possibility well, of course that might happen if if the person who tra trans decides to transfer the leadership to someone they notice is more loving then of course that means the group becomes more loving 
But if the person who's the leader decides that the group who's more, the person who's more loving needs to be criticised a bit because they feel a bit jealous of the person who's more loving, now the group has become even less loving than it was before. Does that make sense? And the other thing that we need to bear in mind is if, if, the, if the leader decides he's going to desperately hold on to the leadership of the group, even though he sees or she sees someone who's in a better loving condition than themselves uh, in the group, then that in itself is going to cause the group to stagnate to, to a point with one exception. And that is if the person in the more loving condition doesn't desire to lead the group, then of course the, they would not accept the leadership of the group. Does that make sense? Yep. So would the, could, I mean, that could actually happen irrespective of any formal declaration of change. Correct. Like it would just naturally, the group would naturally have a higher ceiling as leadership and responsibilities were undertaken, even just from a spiritual sense, not necessarily from a, I'm in charge now, and so, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like it would be sort of organic, not... Can be. It can not, be. But it has to usually be the result of the... The decisions of some, some people. Because if you think about your example, Sai, if, if I'm having a group in my home and I'm the leader of the group and then someone comes to the group who's in a better condition of love, but I don't acknowledge that, uh, I feel like in your question you're saying wouldn't they just naturally begin to lead the group or what would happen if they naturally did? Is that what you're asking? Well, this is what I was uh, wanting to lead into at the beginning, is that um, Facebook groups and physical groups are not that... There's more similarities than you think. They're identical, really. Yes. So if we take the example in my home where I'm the leader and someone comes and they have a higher condition of love than I do, but I don't want to acknowledge it, who's going to lead the group? Still. If you just have the mic my, back, yeah, my back. sorry. The person who's formed it, because that's their, it's their group until they either they relinquish it or sort of move back and let it start evolving. Yeah, uh, or until they acknowledge that yeah. condition. Yeah. So this is where we have to be careful, where we go, oh, if more loving people come, it'll just naturally all work itself out. That's not necessarily the case. Okay, thank you. And in fact, what we've found many times, more loving people come and they get hammered by the group which is a very common thing that we see observe, or, and observe on groups like Facebook groups or forums. And, and that's something, obviously, there's an indication of the poor condition of the entire group. Otherwise, they wouldn't hammer somebody that's new coming along to the group. And perhaps we can explain hammering a little bit. You know, they're criticised, they're told that they're wrong. They're they pulled um, down. Most of the time, they revert to personal attack. Personal attack of the person's... Features, face, body, character, nature, like, you know, they always generally, people who want to pull down another usually revert to personal attack. There's not, there's not an underlying desire to help the person, there's an underlying desire to pull, the, pull them the bits, basically, or and destroy them. To control them. them, to control their presence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we're skipping ahead of ourselves a bit of fear, I feel, because... Firstly, the condition of the person forming the group is going to have a large effect on the, what happens at the group. Now, the person forming the group really is the owner. From God's perspective, the per, any time you create anything, it's your responsibility. Does that make sense? So if you go and create a group just in your own home, from God's perspective, it's your responsibility what happens in that group. You can see you've now, put, you've now created a de facto condition where you are taking the responsibility of a teacher. It's a de facto condition. Even if you form a group and, and don't actually do any personal teaching, you're still, in, you're still responsible for that group. And also, you've, you're, you are the de facto teacher in a lot of ways. Your example is going to determine greatly what people are going to do, feel like they can get away with, feel like they have to conform to, your example is going to have a very large effect. So the, the, the person forming the group is a, you could say de facto, if you like, teacher of the group 
through their example in particular, number one. So A, through example, and B, through their actual words, their actual teachings, whatever they decide to share, through their sharing. And also, if we look at it, the person who um, forms a group has, from God's perspective, the responsibility for the condition of love. Does that make sense? So you form a group, you now have responsibility for its condition of love. Now, of course, because many of us have an injured condition of love, we, we don't know what that means. You know, we think that means, oh, as long as everyone's saying bartery things, I say, oh, you look lovely today. You love your hairstyle today, darling. You're such a great guy. Yeah, and don't, doesn't my shirt look very pretty? Your, your shirt looks very nice too. Um, You're just wonderful. In other words, we're just <laughs> complimenting each other. Now, of course, some of that might be true. <laughs> I'm not suggesting any of that isn't true in this case. But, but can you see that um, if all we're doing is to exchange addictions with each other, particularly from an emotional perspective, not having a willingness to confront truth, not having a willingness to grow in faith, how to grow in the way we use our will, grow in the way that we uh, become humble, and in particular, grow in the way that we love, then all we could be doing is just having a, like, um, I, I, I was going to say some rude things, actually, but um, <laughs> uh, so I won't do that. But um, we could basically just going, you're nice, I'm nice, we're both nice, isn't it wonderful? Or, and, wow, I worked through this emotion the other day. Yes, darling, what was that? <laughs> well, I had all this big grief with my dad, and it was really good, and I really felt really close to God afterwards. Oh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, what have you been working through? Oh, well, I had a lot of... You know how it goes. <laughs> so, so why do I even have to share my experience? If I really had it, I probably wouldn't even bother sharing it. Unless it was going to teach another person something. That's very different to someone saying, gee, I'm really stuck on this issue, and me thinking, wow, I was stuck on that issue once, and this is what I did. Here, let me, let me tell you what happened. Yeah. That's a very different exchange. Can you feel the difference in the exchange? 